So today I'm going to be talking about RF noise in a domestic environment. Switch on an HF receiver and you are going to get lots of noise. It's going to get in the way of your reception. Uh, when I first moved into this house, I had S9 plus noise levels on 20 meters and 30 meters. I couldn't hear on 27 megahertz, I couldn't even hear local CB operators uh, really within a few streets of here. So it was a very severe situation. And the way that I fixed that is to go around the house, identify every single appliance that was putting out RF and either replace it or suppress it. There hasn't been any other way of dealing with this. I will go around and try and show you what some of these have been. Um, the first thing is USB power supplies. So what we've got here are the culprits. 5 volt power supplies, they're all switched mode power supplies and these are a problem because they produce radio signals. Uh, it's also worse when you plug a lead in because plugging a lead into these acts as an aerial. So I'll show you how bad they can be. I have got my uh, radio here. This is a medium wave radio set to 750 kilohertz. It'll give us an idea. I'll plug one of these in. This is an Apple iPad charger and there's a little bit there. I have another of these that produces even less interference than this but that's very good. Um, that's, really, that's really not a problem. Now we will try a Motorola charger that came with a mobile phone. <clears throat> Now, that's producing interference. This is just indicative because obviously it's going to produce harmonics of that frequency um, and it's going to be radiated on any cable that's plugged into this. <clears throat> this is an HTC. Uh, you can hear that already. Very strong signal. Uh, HTC one. In fact, it'll keep transmitting because the capacitors are discharging. Um, next, this is one of the. I mean, that's actually not as bad as it could be. That's one of the uh, ones with multiple outputs. You can see it's the capacitor is discharging there. Um, so what I did was I took all of these out of my house and I replaced them. And I'll show you what I replaced them with. So if you can see here, this is a uh, charger with four 2.4 amp uh, outputs and they go to various devices. I bought quite a number of multiple output ones and selected ones that had uh, low outputs or low, low interference outputs. And here's another one here. And as you can see, all the leads have got clip-on ferrites on them, which undoubtedly do make a difference. Um, the day that I fitted the ferrites, uh, I could tell that they had been fitted. Um, I lost about half an S point of um, interference just by doing that around the house. This is uh, the power supply for my uh, home energy monitor, smart meter thing. Uh, the cable is wrapped a couple of times through that ferrite, um, although that's actually quite a clean transformer. And another transformer that's quite clean is anything made by Google. That's a Google Chromecast Ethernet adapter with a built-in power supply. Uh, that's pretty clean too. A lot of their devices have aren't plug up, pluggable in via USB, although they're still five volt power supplies. But in my experience, they are all pretty clean too. So if we want to look at other devices that cause interference around the house, there uh, are quite a number. And we can start in the living room with things that you might not expect. A TV soundbar. This was causing quite a lot of interference even on standby because it's got a computer in it and what the computer does is it decodes Dolby uh, audio. And I found that I was able to suppress quite a lot of that 
with ferrites again. They are magical things. All the TV inputs and outputs have got ferrites on them. This is my broadband router, which is a TP link, and it's got ferrites on all the inputs and outputs. I don't suffer a lot from um, interference from broadband for some reason, uh, not as much as other people seem to get. Uh, but there is some coming off the telephone line and they're outside and there's not much I can do about that. But I have reduced everything at this end. Uh, these are big noise producers here, these under lights. Uh, these are IKEA ones. The power supplies are hidden uh, in various locations inside the backs of cabinets and things. I had to do a bit of dismantling and fitted ferrites to the AC inputs and the DC outputs of all of these and that has made quite a difference as well. There's nothing we can do about the washing machine. When the washing machine is on, it is carnage on the HF bands. Uh, but that's just life, I suppose. Um, there's not much you can do about it. It's the motor itself that's causing the issues there. And now there's the thorny issue of LED lights. These ones here are Philips LED lights. They have buck regulators in them because they assume that they're going to be plugged into unregulated 12 volt power supplies. Unfortunately, the, we have proper 12 volt drivers here um, and the interference from these is considerable. Uh, I can't operate at all, they're switched on, so I just leave them switched off basically when I'm operating, that's all I can do. But not all LED bulbs are a problem. Um, these are cheap Chinese LED filament lamps, which my electrician assured me would only last a week. Years and years old now. Um, I've got them all over the house. Don't cause any interference at all. I uh, can highly recommend them. Similarly, I have one socket that has USB outputs on it. It's an MK socket, um, and it doesn't really cause any interference at all. But I am told on good authority that a lot of them do. So it might be worth considering if you do have to have one of those that it's an MK one. So now for some things that haven't caused any electrical interference in the house and that people assume would. First thing, HP Elite Desk computer. Uh, I can't determine, get any electrical, any uh, radio interference off of this at all. It's quite remarkable. I haven't even got any ferrites fitted or anything connected to it and it's fine, absolutely fine. Smart meter, no interference at all. Uh, nothing coming off that at all. What I do get though on these cables at the bottom here, there is stuff coming off there, but that's stuff that's being picked up from all the appliances in the house uh, and ending up on the mains. But uh, I haven't found that the mains, uh, noise on the mains is a significant issue and I'll show you. What we've got down here is a G3SEK mains filter, which made no difference at all. The theory is that there's RF gets onto the mains, it then gets onto the earth side of the radio, uh, gets onto the aerial, is radiated off the aerial and picked up by the receiver. I didn't find that's what was happening. When I analysed mine, I discovered that the RF was being picked up on the antenna and on the coax. It was being radiated as a radio signal throughout the house. And the way that I got around this, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, that looks like a patch lead, but it's uh, got 18 ferrite beads on it. Uh, and it acts as a line isolator um, on my HF antenna. So anything coming in, uh, if there's anything on the outer of that uh, that it's being picked up, it's removed before it gets to the receiver. The other thing that I did was to put a one-to-one -one ballon on my dipole. Uh, and that stopped anything at that end. And that made a significant difference, really significant difference. Yep, electric vehicle charger. Absolutely no interference from that at all. Uh, either when it's charging or when it's off. Um, absolutely nothing. So that's a brief rundown on how I reduced noise floor in the house. Went from about S9 to about S3. And you can get it lower uh, simply by using uh, either an attenuator uh, or switching off any preamp on the HF rig, which Yesu call an IPO.
there's all sorts of things you can do to actually increase this, uh, improve the signal to noise ratio on the bands. But that's the first things that uh, I did, the technical things that I did in the house. And one last thing that I did do, I had a switched mode power supply. I switched it for an, uh, a linear power supply. And that made very little difference because the switched mode power supply that I had had a few birdies on 80 and 40 meters, but it had a control that allowed you to detune those. And it was a proper radio one. It really made no difference changing that. So that may not be your answer, but have a look at the noise floor. That's with the, that's with the preamp on. GM4 said GI on uh, 10 meters. And if we go down the bands, fifteen. It's getting a bit worse there on uh, seventeen at the moment. But it's not bad. In fact, if I put the noise blank in, it gets rid of some of it. Usual culprits. I mean, S4, it used to be up to here. And that's with the the preamp on. If I take the preamp off, it's down to S1. So what can I say? All of this has made a difference. And it shows that it's possible to actually get your noise level down and operate from uh, what was previously a noisy environment. I hope this helps someone. It's been a bit of a long video. But uh, I needed to cover everything that I had done because people do ask about this. Uh, bye for now.